That'd be a shock. <laughs> How many games have you been out to see this, uh, this season so far? I just saw the one where they played each other. Uh, for both.
I just said, was telling somebody over there, what are we doing wrong in West Hartford? We're five and 26 in the top. <laughs>
Five's presentation of high school basketball doubleheader action today involving the Chieftains and the Hall Warriors. Pete Lamoureux along with John Benier and our fine WHC-TV crew led by Jen Evans and G2 Hunley. And first up, it's the boys in a rematch of the January 25th contest won by Connard in overtime, 53-50 at Robinson Gym. Seesaw battle that day, finally decided by a couple of threes by Kevin Paleo in the extra session. And unfortunately, since that game, neither team has won. The Chieftains have dropped five in a row. The Warriors have lost 10 straight. Both teams rely on their all-conference performers. For all, it's Dan Brock averaging 16 points per game and shooting over 60% from the field. While for Connard, their outstanding junior guard, Aiden Maloney, also with 16 per, and a big force in the fourth quarter the first time these teams got together. The Chieftains try to do something they haven't done in over a decade. Sweep Hall in the season series hasn't been done since 03 04. Pleased to be working today with former Connard boys coach John Benier. And John, you coached in a number of these games. What's it like to have this type of an atmosphere here? Well, you know, I'm just looking around the stands to see a lot of alumni, and uh, the excitement is, you know, palpable. Uh, the game always means something here. Um, when you're struggling a little bit, like sadly both of, uh, Hall and Connard are this year, um, it makes your season. Um, it, it's you know great for bragging rights. Um, it's a great way to end your year um, and look forward to the, ne to the next year. So uh, the game was close last time. Paleo actually hit three consecutive threes at the end. Um, Brock uh, was in a little bit of foul trouble during uh, throughout that game rather, and uh, so if he can stay on the court longer. It might uh, tip the balance for Hall this, uh, today. You talked about the fact both teams overall struggling. Both teams come in with identical marks of 3 and 14, both off of losses the other day. But one of those cases, I think you can use that cliche. You can throw the records out the window because it really means so much to these kids. No question about it. Um, uh, we've had uh, situations where Hall on paper had the better team, and then our counter teams were better in at, at some years. And... Uh, it doesn't make any difference. The emotion and uh, the crowd and, and just the excitement of the game sometimes, uh, depending on how the kids handle it, tip, it in, uh, tip the direction in one way or another. So it, it, it'll be exciting to see what happens today. Brian Moretti, the head coach of the All Warriors, he's been around for a while, 10 years since he took over the program. Just a couple of years for the new kid on the block, Jared Leghorn. And 28 years old he was an assistant for you back in the day and what did you see in him that uh, you thought uh, eventually you'd be a, a good head coach like he is today well yeah, it was my last year here at Conard, uh and Jared was uh, you know he's a great teacher he works in West Hartford very much a details oriented guy he uh, just a, a fan of the game and a student of the game he comes from uh, a basketball family um, uncles and you know very good players back in the day so he's a basketball guy and it was uh, my pleasure to co uh, have an opportunity to work with him he's uh, he's gonna be a fine young coach and how about Brian you went against him in the wars a number of times over the years he's done a fine job with that Hall program again a little bit down this year but certainly he's been a consistent coach through the years uh, yeah I love Brian he's one I consider him to be a real friend um, and we've had some battles over the years and he uh, I watch a uh, one of his practices, one of the first ones he had this year, does an outstanding job coaching his kids, um, and uh, he's just a great guy. Very intense, kind of like I was back in the day, um, but we always, uh, we always, we always had our, our mutual respect for one another. Talking to him the other day, and I had a nice opportunity to chat with all four of the coaches on the phone on Wednesday, as we have the introduction of the starting lineups here. He said, hey, his kids have been uh, really good in terms of working. The effort's been there. They've done everything right this year, except put the ball in the basket. Yeah, that's been a, a concern for both programs and a bunch of other games I've seen around the state. Um, you know, both teams have executed well. I saw the Connor Northwest game, and I thought they did an excellent job of running offense um, and stayed with the Northwest for a while. Um, but, you know, just not finding the hoop was a big issue for them. I know Hall does the same. They execute very well. Um, the, uh, whoever might make the most baskets today um, in big spots uh, might come out on top. And just talk quickly about the, the great players on each side. You have Maloney for Connard. You have Brock for, for Hall. Both of the offenses run through those guys. There they do. And both of those kids, um, I, uh, looking from the sideline, for my part, if they can realize how great they are and just play really hard, 
they, they'll be even better. Uh, they, they have great, great potential, both of those kids. Crowd is rising here. Bill Watson on the PA has asked them to stand, remove their caps as we get set to honor America with our national anthem. the Conard Choral Group with a very nice rendition of the National Anthem before we get set for the game here today. This is the third of four games being played on this floor here today. The boys JV won by Hall 54-51. The girls JV won by Conard. Good effort by Hall to try to come back. The Chieftains won that one 48-44. Hall trying to come back from a 17-1 deficit in that game. Connor on the floor, Jack O'Connor, Aiden Maloney, Kevin Paleo, Jackson Bell, and Mark Emile, the starting five for 28-year-old Jared Leghorn in his second year at the helm. His team won six games a year ago. They won't reach that mark this year, but again, he continues to evolve as a coach, and he looks forward to the future, that's for sure. Dan Brock will jump center as he'll go up against Mark Emile. Hall in the traditional Blue road uniforms, Connard in white, tap is controlled by Hall, and we're underway. In the front court, this is Sean James, dynamic young freshman playing for Brian Moretti's team. He's picked up immediately by O'Connor. Now they get a down low to Brock, fumbles the ball, and we're going to have our first foul of the game. Yep, Jackson really bodied him, uh, Brock up very well. He just um, got a little over anxious, reached in instead of up with his hands, so he drew a foul that time. And Daniel Brock averaging 16 points per contest. And he misses the first off the back of the rim. Andy Savo, Dean DeAngelis, your officials for today's game. A combined 83 years of officiating experience. Misses two. The rebound is missed. Ball is loose on the floor, and it's controlled by Connard. Into the front court. Paleo down the left wing side, and a foul is going to be called on the sideline. He was met there on the far sideline by Tyreek Robinson. And it's one foul on each side. Non-shooting foul, so Connor will put it in play from the left sideline. And they finally get it in. This is Emil, top of the circle. Puts it on the floor, bounce pass back outside, and this is Aiden Maloney setting the offense. Maloney in no hurry as he dribbles and cuts to his left and hands the ball back off. Now the top of the circle, this is Paleo. Right side, Maloney. Being guarded there by Daniel Roth. Long shot by Emil is short. Offensive rebound. The putback on the way is missed, and the rebound is controlled by the Hall Warriors. It's one thing, John, they didn't do well in the first matchup. Connor only had four offensive rebounds against Hall. That has to be one of the keys here today. Yeah, I'm, 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 I was kind of a stickler for rebounding and defending inside. Um, that's one thing I think the Chieftains really need to focus on today. Uh, the very first shot for Hall, the kid snuck in, or the free throw rather, snuck in on the baseline and got the rebound and put it right back up. So they're going to have to make sure they find people and block out. And the first bucket of the game, a three-pointer. And the Hall Warriors take a 3-0 lead. 
Second possession for Connor as Maloney walks it across. Angles to his left. Pass underneath. Bell is rejected by Brock and Hall back in the other direction. Here's James leading the break, and now he's going to pull up. Swings it right side. Now back outside. This is Sean James. Only five foot three, but certainly a big presence for the freshman. Has to be a good decision maker, according to Coach Brian Moretti. And now steps called on Hall. Back to James for a second. It's been a long time, Coach Moretti said, John, since he's had an impact freshman like the kid James. Yeah, he's a really nice player. He's what coaches would call, you know, just a pure point guard. And uh, he always has his head up. He's looking to feed the ball and penetrate and maybe take a shot or two when he can. He's a really nice player. Here's Maloney, left side, dribbling baseline. Passes for Bell, and it's stolen by Brock. So Brock has a steal and a block in the opening 2-10. Left side shot is short. That was taken and missed by Daniel Roth. And here's Maloney back the other way for the Chieftains. Cuts into the middle, has the ball stripped and stolen, is loose on the floor. They battle for it, and Maloney comes away with it. Jared Leghorn calls him the consummate gym rat, and you can see he's all over the place. Yeah, he is. We, uh, we did some workouts together since uh, a couple, three times uh, since he's been in eighth grade. He, um, he really takes pride in working hard at his game. I watched him um, in the gym uh, a handful of times uh, when we were at one-on-one, -on -one and he, he's a hard worker. He's a, he's, he's a good player. Here's Hall. Brock with the shot. Too long. Maloney gets the rebound underneath. Not too many times you can see a guard sky like that and get the rebound. Here's Emil with the running one-hander. No good, but he drew contact and got the foul. So Connor held off the scoreboard, the opening 3-0-3 of this first quarter. It remains 3-0 Hall, 4-57 to play. John talked about the foul trouble that Brock got in the first time they got together, and he just picks up his first. Sending Emil to the line, and he hits the first. Mark Emil averaging 8.1 points and 4.3 rebounds per game. Only a 54% free throw shooter made the first one look easy. Yeah, that's a good sign. Uh, you know, in a game like this, you know, you're a little nervous, and um, to knock that first one down gives the kids a lot of confidence. Second on the way, it's no good. It rims out. Hall three, Conard one as James walks it across for the Warriors into the front court. Picked up by O'Connor, tries to go right off the screen, dribbles baseline as the Warriors set up in the half-court offense. This is Hudson with the basketball for Hall. This is Tyson, pass underneath, it's stolen, and then it's re-stolen by Hall, shot out of the way, good, and a foul. Good inside position that time by the Warriors, and they're able to get the putback and a chance for a three-point play. John Wells that time with the basket. Yeah, good good, uh, good hustle there. Picked up a loose ball, went strong, got hit a couple times, and now he's got a chance for a three-point play. A.J. Fair checking into the lineup, replacing Jack O'Connor. As John Wells, senior captain forward. Converts on the old-fashioned three-point play. And the Warriors have opened up a five-point lead. It's 6-1 to one as we come up on the halfway point here in the opening quarter. Glad you've joined us on this cold, blustery winter afternoon here in West Hartford. Maloney guarded tightly by Roth. Tries to cut to his left. Passes for Bell. Now Paleo, the long race shot is good. So Kevin Paleo hit those three late threes for the Chieftains in the first matchup against Hall, able to connect the first field goal of the afternoon for Connor. It's a 6-4 game. Roth the other way, misses the shot, and Emil rebounds. Here's Maloney into the front court for the Chieftains, and he's going to be fouled on the play. It's all a game of momentum, John, going back and forth, and now Connard seizing the momentum. Yeah, I think Connard looked like they, they want to press after a made basket. They just haven't been able to do that yet. I think they're going to test um, Hall's backcourt a little bit, you know, try to manufacture some points uh, through their defense, looks like. That last foul was on Daniel Roth, his first, already the third team foul in just the first four minutes of the contest. Here's Connard. Can tie with a two, can lead with a three. Pass back outside. 
This is Maloney dribbling the basketball for the Chieftains. Long range three is wide, is no good. Long rebound, saved momentarily by the Chieftains of right into the hands of Hall. Here's James speeding into the front court, running one-hander off the side of the rim, no good. They fight for the rebound, it's loose. Brock on it, back with the shot, good. So there's Dan Brock with another bucket. Good persistence off the offensive glass and the lead back to four. Yeah, it's great. Uh, just like you said, great persistence and a great job by the, uh, the point guard to get to the basket. Um, they're going to try to want to do that as often as possible uh, or hit some jumpers so that they'll op open up the court for Dan to catch the ball. Um, so it looks like uh, him penetrating is going to be a good, good, good thing for Hall. Pass goes off the hands of Fair and out of bounds. So that'll be Hall basketball. Pressure in the backcourt by the Chieftains. As it'll be Tyson putting it in play. And he gets it into James. Good job by Hall to beat the pressure. They fake the bounce pass, kick it outside. James for three. No good off the front of the rim, and Maloney has the rebound. 2.45 to go opening quarter as Maloney sets the offense for the Chieftains. Being watched by James. Got a screen from Simplicio, goes to his left, up with the wild shot, it's good. Nice penetration move by Maloney, and that brings the Chieftains back to within two. 8-6, back the other way, shot is good, and a foul. John Wells again, asserting himself offensively. He's had a big first quarter for the Warriors. Yeah, you know, being aggressive to the basket in basketball is generally a good thing when you're on offense, so... Um, you know, all, all the better to him. I think the team today that's the most aggressive getting the ball either driven to the basket, like I think Connor needs to do to open up jumpers, or throwing the ball inside like Hall I think needs to do to Dan or get him the ball as often as possible. And let those guys be aggressive is going to really help them out in the long run. Second foul against Jackson Bell. And here's John Wells trying for another three-point play, and he's got it. And the Hall lead is five. It's 11 6, 220 to go here in the opening quarter. And John Wells has as many points as the Connor team themselves. Right side, Maloney. Off the pass from Paleo. Dribbling the basketball, thought about the three and thought better of it. Chieftains very deliberate. Now Maloney's drive, passes to Simplicio, kick out for Emil, long shot is gone. Well set up that time, John, and they got the three-pointer. Yeah, a little penetration. Um, they passed it off, and then uh, they found Emil wide open. Um, good team play. And off the steal, Connor tried to take their first lead. Maloney missed, and Hall back the other way. Foul line, jump is good by Brock. Good answer for the Warriors. Very nice touch for a big man. Yeah, it really does. And that's a tough shot coming straight down the court like that, catching it, shooting straight on. He really has the good hands. Nice touch. 13-9. Hall's lead is four. They've led by as many as five here in this opening quarter. Maloney with the fake on Tyson. Kicks it into the left corner. Now Emil back to Maloney. Top of the circle. Maloney tries to cut to his left. Ball is stripped when it's controlled. And now a timeout is going to be taken on the floor. Comes with 101 to go here in the first quarter. Hall in front 13 to 9. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors, including those at the all state level. The Keating Insurance Agency, Maca Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Conard and Hall PTO and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all for their fine support of the War Chief Sports Council. Also a reminder, we'll join you again for a hockey coverage two weeks from today. We'll be at Veterans Memorial Ice Rink. One o'clock face-off between Connard and Hall of Southern and Southington, the co-op team. And we'll have the broadcast for you on Channel 5. Matt Conyers, Chief Hockey Writer for the Hartford Current, will join me for that broadcast. 60-second timeout. 13-9, to nine. and John, uh, your overall first impressions of this first quarter. Oh, it's been great so far. Um, I, I think the Chieftains, though, 
uh, some someone other than Aiden really has to try to get the ball to the basket. And he's, you know, if your best player is always giving the ball away instead of shooting it, sometimes that, you know, he can uh, initiate stuff. But a lot of times you want that kid catching and finishing like uh, Paleo did in the first game. Someone dribbled, drove, and kicked it out to him. Um, that's, I think, more kids are going to have to be a little bit more aggressive to the basket for Chieftains. They had that one nice set play that Emil finished off with the three. Really the only great set play they've had out of the set offense so far. Yeah, so far. And, and that started with penetration. We passed to an open guy, and then they found Emil again open. So it starts with penetration, just like Maloney did now a second ago. Um, he's going to take those. you got to let your uh, your best score uh, get to the basket as often as he can. Maybe don't you know, pick up a foul or pass it off to if there's a slide. He's going to draw a lot of attention today, just like Dan is on the other side of the court. Here's Roth for three, it's good. They said he had one foot on the line, or did they? They show 16-9 on the scoreboard. Seven point lead for Hall, that's their largest lead of the opening quarter. And it looks like the Chieftains will hold for one. There's Fair dribbling the basketball back out to Maloney as they play catch. 10 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Two or three zone by Hall. Maloney's long range shot, no good. Half court shot at the buzzer is too long. And that's the way the first quarter ends. So eight minutes in the books here on doubleheader Saturday. It's basketball Saturday in West Hartford. And your score at the end of one, Hall 16 and Connard 9. This is West Hartford High School Basketball presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC-TV Channel 5. And we welcome you back for second quarter action. Pete Lamoureux along with John Benier and our fine WHC-TV crew. Jen Evans and G2 Hundley on hand for us. Connard, first possession of the second quarter. Hall, their biggest lead so far of the afternoon. They're up 7, 16-9. And that first possession ends up in a Connor turnover. Yeah, it was an offensive foul. I got I got screened by uh, Coach Leghorn that time, but uh, you know there's a good example of uh, Fair doing his job and trying to get to the basket. Um, every once in a while, you're going to draw a foul, but he he needs to continue to do that to help out the Chieftains. Full court pressure here by Connor. Good job by Hall to break. Here's James off the glass and good. Sean James. The freshman guard, first bucket of the second quarter. And Hall has doubled up Connor on the scoreboard. It's 18 to 9. Fair in the left corner. Passes to Simplicio. The jump shot rims out. And the rebound is controlled by the Hall Warriors. Mike Ferengi off the defensive glass. James all the way. And he got tied up. And it'll be a jump ball. Even though he didn't get the shot off, gotta love the hustle as you talked about of James before. Yeah, I, I really like his game. He, he always has his head up. He likes to attack with his dribble. He finds guys once he penetrates. He's not afraid to score. He's doing a nice job. Hall putting it in from under their own basket. A kicked ball, so it'll stay with the Warriors. Kevin Paleo guarding the inbounds. And they get it into Roth. Thought about the three and thought better of it. Pass down low, and we're going to get a foul against Connard before the shot. Non shooting foul. As uh, that'll be the fifth team foul against the Chieftains. So once again, it'll be James putting it in play from under his own basket. There's the inbounds. A shot by Brock around the rim and in. 
Got the shooter's roll again. He's having himself one heck of a first half. Yeah, he is. Uh, Hall's starting to show some dominance inside. That little out-of-bounds play that uh, they ran there. Both guys got posted up. Um, Shane got on the wrong side or behind Dan and reached over the top when they passed it into the post. They have to get on the side of those big guys and have them catch the ball as far away from the basket as possible. Emil missed the three. Rebound to Hall. Warriors have their first double-digit lead of the afternoon at 11. It's 20-9. James a long shot off the front of the rim. Good rebound by Brock underneath, and he's going to be fouled. Well, you've talked about it a couple of times, John, that they're just asserting their will and their persistence on the offensive glass. And if Connor doesn't do a better job of boxing out, this one could uh, get out of hand a little bit. Yeah, it's like football, I guess. You know, if the one line is dominating the other line physically, rebounding or posting up, it's going to take its toll eventually. And uh, I think right now the white shirts need to try to move the blue shirts out of the paint a little bit better. Talked about the rebound and disparity the first time these teams got together. As Brock has his second at the line, he hits it, and it's 21-9. to nine. Seven points for Dan Brock, the junior center captain, and he leads all scorers this afternoon. Chant of let's go Chieftains from the Conard faithful on the far side of the uh, floor. Connor able to control off what should have been a Chieftain's turnover. Maloney kicks it left side. The shot is good. Jackson Bell wide open, and he's able to nail it. Yeah, nice shot by Jackson after a good penetrate by Aiden. I love uh, Jackson. Uh, he's done a great job with uh, making himself a better athlete in one year. Looks like a different kid. Plays hard. Good, uh, you know, he's a, uh, a, just a great captain. Um, does a great job for Coach Leghorn. 6.3 points, 6.2 rebounds per contest. There's Brock underneath, off the glass, and good. Jared Leghorn giving the officials an earful, saying that Brock pushed off to get position that time, but to no avail. Nine for Brock. The lead at 12, 23-11. Five and a half to play. And the chant of you can't stop him from the Hall faithful down to the other end of the floor. Here's Maloney trying to get things started for the Chieftains. Passes right side to Emil. In the lane, running one-hander is good. Pretty move that time by Emil for the bucket. Yeah, I, I've seen him play a, a bunch of times. I think that's a, the best way that he can find a score is attacking the basket. You know, he's an athletic kid. Um, sometimes athletic kids like to settle for jumpers, but I think his strength in his game is taking it to the hole. Hall misses a shot. Maloney looks to lead the rush, and it's good. So certainly, if Connors to get back in this game, they need Aiden Maloney to heat up. And the bucket, just his second. He has four points on the afternoon. 23-15, the Hall lead at eight. Coming up on four and a half to play here in the opening half. First of two this afternoon. The girls' game will follow at four o'clock as the Connors girls look to win their 17th of the season. Dribble drive that time by the Warriors by Hudson, and the foul goes against Connor. Seventh team foul as the fouls continue to mount, John. Yeah, I'm just noticing that um, uh, Connor is uh, on drives. We're, we're not really, uh, Coach Leghorn likes to say, walling up, putting your hands up, and getting, being obstruction for the guy going to the basket. We're kind of, we're not turning the corner and walling that kid out, stopping his penetration. We really got to, I think we really need to focus on doing that. Bo boxing out has been better in the last minute and a half or so. Now we just got to stop that penetration. 25-15. After a pair at the foul line that time. By the Warriors. Line drive shot by Emil is missed. And the rebound to Hall. And here come the Warriors into the front court. This is Hudson. Dribbling the basketball for Hall. Pass goes down low to Brock. Plays catch with Wells. Wells pulls up for the jump. It's short. And the rebound goes to O'Connor. And a pushing foul, I think, is going to be called against Hall that time. It's going to go against John Wells. And that's his first. And that's four on Hall. As Connor comes back the other way. Hall 25, Connard 15 with 3.45 to play until halftime. 
Maloney pulls up for three. It's off the side of the rim, no good. And Brock, the authoritative rebound. Here's James going the other way. Kicks it out. Roth for three. He's wide open. He missed it short. Tried to chase down his own rebound, but here's O'Connor the other way. Speeds into the front court. Kicks it off to Maloney. And now Aiden dribbles back near half court. Works off in a meal screen. Dribbles to his left. Crazy left-handed shot is no good, and Brock rebounds. Here's James into the front court for a haul. To Roth, and now back to James. Brian Moretti said he's been a good decision maker for his squad as he continues to have his game evolve. Three-second violation against Hall, and that'll turn it back over to Connor. Uh, they do a nice job. The two big guys for Hall, the hot little high-low action they've been going towards. Um, and, uh, you know, it's tough to guard that. Both of those kids can shoot it. Both of those kids are athletic enough to drive it to the basket. And they're, you know, pretty dominating inside right now. They're doing a nice job. This is A.J. Fair, freshman guard for the Chieftains. Dribbles to his left, tries to take it coast to coast. It's no good. And here comes Hall in the front court. James, nice pass, he finds Brock, but Brock is called for steps. And he slams the ball down on the court in disgust. I don't know if he's frustrated with himself or frustrated with the call. Uh, I think it was a little bit more of the call that time, but it was a good call. He just got a little anxious. Um, uh, on the plus side for him, um, I thought that he should have done a lot more attacking with his dribble in the last game. It's a good sign for Hall that he's being this aggressive. Still a double digit lead for the Warriors. Ball is tipped up in the air, but it's still controlled. Pass down low. It's loose on the floor. Connor comes away with it. Good aggressiveness by Fair, and he kicks it back outside. Maloney settling things down, being watched by Tyson. Left side, this is Emil. Back up top to Fair. They swing it around the perimeter. Chieftain's in no hurry on this possession. Nice pass in the middle. Shot is missed. Bell had an opportunity off a nice entry pass from Maloney. And Hall goes back in the other direction. This is James. He drives. Good stutter move, and he kicks it back outside. Nice spin move by, Tops, by Tyson back to James. Pass is deflected and stolen. Ball is loose on the floor, and I think they're going to call Hall on the foul. Good defense by Emil that time, forcing the turnover. Yeah, nice hands, absolutely. And just missed, uh, I think, Maloney leaking away for a layup before he got fouled. So uh, they, they, they did, a, they did a great job defending that set. Really did a nice job. And from a coach's perspective, good foul that time to negate what would have been an easy deuce. Yeah, yeah, it depends. It depends who's giving it. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to rack up too many fouls doing that. But um, yeah, kids are being aggressive, and sometimes uh, they over penetrate like Hall just did then a little bit and get themselves into another pair of hands that they weren't expecting. So yeah, both on both sides. Nice job. Time out on the floor taken by Hall. 25-15. The Warriors have the lead. Just over a minute to play here in the opening half. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors including those of the Captain's Levels Supporters Group, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, and Coastal Tool, and Rob Ludgen, thanks to one and all, and also to the all-conference supporters, Allied Printing, and the Hartford Golf Club. Sponsorship from those fine folks make broadcasts like these possible. Again, first of two this afternoon, John and I will join you for the girls' contest which is a rematch, John, of a 60-19 to 19 countered win talking about the, the girls. But uh, I expect Jeff Kaplowitz and company to be a lot more competitive today. I agree. I agree. It was a tough, tough go. And the Connor girls were really um, on their game that night. Um, they play very well together. They run. Uh, the Hall girls have had some issues with injuries, which doesn't help, certainly, when your better players go down. So I'm sure it's going to be uh, the coaching staff at Hall is going to get their kids ready to play tonight. Maloney with the bucket. He now has a half dozen. The Hall lead is eight. 25-17 with under a minute to go here in the opening half. Ferengi in the contest for Hall. 
Here's James. Passes down low. Brock, nice dish that time for Renji. and misses the left-handed cut, and Bell has the rebound. Knocked out of bounds, and they're going to say last touched by the Warriors. Pretty pass that time, even though Hall not able to get the finish. Yeah, a lot of people think when you, uh, two big guys play high-low, it's always from the high position to the low position, but coach, I'm sure Coach Murray uh, coaches guys very well. If the low-post guy catches it, the high-post guy... Uh, defensive man helps down and immediately the offensive guy cuts to the hoop so they saw that they were uh, I'm well coached well coached and like coach Moretti's been saying they do everything but put the ball in the basket unfortunately yeah. from the from their perspective that's the only thing that was missing on that play sadly yeah 27 seconds to go foul against Hall again just their sixth team foul so it's a non-shooting foul and O'Connor for Connor will put it in play from the far sideline at half court. Connor trail by as many as 11, so they'd certainly like to make a nice dent. They throw the ball away, and Varenju with the steal. So we'll see if Brian Moretti has his team hold for the final shot of this opening half as James directs traffic out near the midcourt line. It's being watched by Paleo. Pass into the left corner. Back outside for James. He had played catch with Robinson. Long shot is short at the buzzer, and that's the way the first half ends. So a little bit of words exchange, some extracurriculars. And now Jared Leghorn instructing his team to go to the locker room as things end here in the first half. So your score at halftime, the Hall Warriors 25 and the Connor Chieftains 17. John, it was a 11 point lead, the largest for the Warriors. Connor able to get it back into single digits. Again, your impressions of the first half. I think, uh, you know, Hall definitely uh, kind of had the, the way, their way with Hall, uh, Connor uh, inside. You know, uh, rebounding misses, uh, posting up. Um, they, you know, a three or three pointer to start it, and a jumper here and there. But um, you know, they've done a nice job of attacking and being, you know, strong, taking high percentage shots. Connor, on the other hand, has been relying on their dribble penetrations, which is getting better, um, and either trying to score or pass to someone that's open after they dribble. Um, and that was a slow start for them. They're going through Aiden Maloney to start and initiate things, like, which I think is a great idea. Uh, and uh, they just need to get play to get a couple more touches off of penetration perhaps. Um, some of the big guys touch the ball, maybe attack the basket as well, and they'll be right back uh, in this game in no time at all. 25-17 the score as we're at halftime. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level, including Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, the West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball Team, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, the Edward Connors Insurance Agency, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and the West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. All of those are varsity level sponsors, and thanks to one and all. John Benier and I will come back with second half action in about seven minutes from now. Until then, we'll remind you that the score again at halftime, it is Hall 25, Connard 17. You're watching WHC-TV Channel 5's production of West Hartford High School Sports in association with the War Chief Sports Council. We'll be back with more in a few minutes.
And we welcome you back to Connor Gym. First of our doubleheader this afternoon on WHC TV Channel 5. Pete Lamoureux along with John Benier. G2 Huntley is our director on site. Jen Evans back in the studio. 25-17. The Hall Warriors have the lead as we begin play here in the third quarter. Brock has nine points to lead all scorers for the Hall Warriors. Maloney and Emil six apiece for Connor, who trailed by as many as 11 in the opening half. Team switch ends, and here's Maloney with the first possession of the second half. This is Paleo, guarded closely by James. Kicks it back outside, now Bell for Maloney. Nice weak side pass. They kick it back out. Three ball on the way, missed by Paleo, and they're going to call O'Connor for over the back. Aggressive foul off the first miss of the second half. Yeah, coaches like those kinds of aggressive off, uh, defensive fouls or rebounding foul. O'Connor, great job. Another captain uh, who I love just the way he works and, uh, and plays. He's a great lacrosse player as well. Just a great, great team leader. First shot for Hall by Brock. He missed the shot. And he's going to pick up his second. He went over the back that time. Yep, yep. Everyone's getting after a little bit. Kind of just ran a great set. Um, looked inside. And, you know, it, it, I think it's going to get interesting. It looks like they've gone more to set plays, at least right now, Connor, instead of it trying to initiate stuff off their dribble. So I think they're trying to be a little bit more deliberate with their offense. Here's Maloney, guarded by Roth, goes into the lane, and he draws the foul. So he beat Roth that time, and Danny, the senior captain forward for Hall, had to fire him, had to uh, foul him. Second on Roth, second on the team, non-shooting foul. As Connard sets up the offense for their second possession here in the third quarter. Ball stripped by Roth, but controlled in the backcourt by Aiden Maloney. 16 points, 2.4 assists for the junior guard Maloney. They scored 20 points plus in seven games this year. Held to just six in the opening half by Coach Moretti's defense. Nice pass down low for Bell. Good and the foul. Pretty move, pretty pass, and Bell with the finish. Yeah, nice job with uh, Paleo and Bell. You know, little ball screen and uh, Paleo just great bounce pass baseline. To, uh, Bell went strong and got rewarded with a foul. And the foul was on Tyson. And he makes the shot. Old-fashioned three-point play. First points of the second half for either team. And the lead is whittled down to five. 25-20 with six and a half to play here in the third quarter. This is James. Kicks it back outside. Roth, top of the circle. Left wing three for James is good. Big answer that time by Sean James, the freshman guard, and the lead back up to eight. This is Bell. He looked for Maloney on the cut, but he was picked up nicely by the Hall defense. Emil swings it left side to Maloney. Works off a screen, drives baseline. Bell, the pull-up shot is good. He's fighting the hot hand here in the third quarter. Yeah, two in a row. Who remember that for a long time, I'm thinking. Yeah, he's doing a great job being aggressive. A nice pass by Aiden uh, on the help when he dribbled in. Found the open guy. Great job. 
So Jackson Bell, who averages only six points per contest, gets four points within a minute. 28-22. The lead is six. Here's Brock. Thought about driving. Instead, kicks it back outside. This is Hudson with the basketball for the Warriors. Back outside. Brock went up for the shot. Came back down with it. And that's a turnover. And it'll go back over to the Chieftains. What do you notice about Connor doing a little better job in the half-court defense so far, Coach? Yeah, they, they eliminated just the straight pass into the post, which is good, and they jumped out on that screen uh, on, uh, for Dan. Uh, so they are they're starting to take things a, a little uh, away from them. Uh, Coach Leichhorn did a great job on making those adjustments at halftime. Second opportunity here for Connor, and they're going to call Emil for steps. So Mark Emil. A little anxious that time as he tried to cut to his right along the foul line. Here's Hall in the front court. James pulls up for the long shot. It rims out, and Maloney has the rebound for Connor. Chieftains try to cut into that six-point deficit. Maloney pulls up. Long shot is good. Aiden Maloney with the long-range jumper. The three makes it 28-25 with four and a half to play here in the third quarter. Left side with the basketball, James. Back outside to Roth. It was a pass down low for Brock. Brock thought he was going to go up with the shot, wasn't expecting the pass, and they threw it away. Yeah, I think uh, also seeing that strong front, and they're real anxious to get Dan the ball right now. and Maybe we just need to take a little half a second and just you know, figure out what kind of pass that needs to be. It's the right idea, just didn't execute it well. Here's Maloney, scoop pass underneath. Bell misses the shot, but he was fouled by John Wells. So here's a counter team down 11 midway through the second quarter, and uh, they can cut it to one with a couple of foul shots right here. Yeah, it's kind of reverse of the first half. Hall was really getting to the basket pretty easily, and uh, just most recently the Chieftains are getting to the basket. Uh, feeling defensive pressure and dumping it off to the guy that's open. They're doing a really nice job with that right now. Jackson Bell, 73% free throw shooter. Hit the first, missed the second, Brock the rebound, and here's Hudson in the front court. 28-26, all by two, exactly halfway through the third quarter. Nice catch underneath, and the shot is up and good by John Wells. His offense has been a bonus. I think they gave credit to the wrong guy on the scoreboard. I thought that was Wells. Nice bonus when he comes in with six points. <laughs> yeah, it is. He's a big, strong kid. You know, you know what? Not more I see him play, you know, he's got good feet, good agility. You know, and he, he's really not being afraid to take it to the ball, uh, basket. It's really great. Connor O'Connor, a pretty baseline move, gets it to go, and it's thirty to twenty-eight. So Jack O'Connor, senior captain guard. And he hears it from the Connor faithful. Here's Hudson with the pass. This is Wells. You know he's not going to shoot from out there. Bounce pass to Brock. Kicks it left side to Hudson. Dribbles out near center court. Now puts it back in the hands of James. James directs traffic from the left side. Left side, Brock thought about the long range jumper. Instead, holds high overhead. Nice pass to Wells. Down the lane, up with the shot, no good. And a foul. Jared Leghorn off the bench, can't believe the call. But in any event, John Wells getting himself to the free throw line. Yeah, he rubbed off at the end of that set. You know, I was just watching Bell and uh, Brock go at it a little bit. And um, Bell has definitely, definitely changed the way he's playing him. He's not playing right behind him to allow that easy post pass. And, fronting over directly side denying him uh, and it's making Hall do other things uh, the, the last pick the last probably the last option of their offense was uh, the catch and uh, the shot for the other big guy so nice job by Connor on defense Wells missed the first he gets one more opportunity at the free throw line off the back of the rim no good Brock fought for the rebound but it's controlled by Connor here's Maloney into the front court Pulls up for the long race, three is gone. And for the first time today, the Chieftains are in front with two and a half to play in the third. Yep, Aiden came down, you could just tell. He, is, he was in his rhythm, off his dribble, 
And as soon as he shot it, you know it was in. He looks confident. He looks uh, got some energy right now, which is good. He had six points in the entire first half. He has six in the third, 12 in all. Driving move by the Warriors is no good, but a foul against Connor. So they've climbed the mountain, as we talked about, a double-digit deficit in the second quarter for the Connor Chieftains, and so now they have their first lead of the day. Took him about 21 minutes to do that. Simplicio picked up the foul, and Danny Roth at the line. And he gets the shooter's roll, and he's tied the game at 220 here in the third. Big-time hustle guy and rebounder for Brian Moretti is Daniel Roth. He calls him essentially a two-year captain because he's been that much of a big leadership role on the bench. He hits two, and Hall goes back in front. Seesaw battle. Brian Moretti said of Daniel Roth, as soon as he started to understand his role better, and that was about midway through last year, been a terrific complimentary player for him. Yeah, that's great. A lot of kids... Um uh, it takes them a while to figure out who they are as basketball players, and, and unfortunately they see themselves a little differently than the coach does in terms of how they help the team. Um, and guys like Roth are great uh, once they figure that out because, you know, it's not always about scoring, you know, shutting a guy down, defending, giving an energy, and passing, moving the ball is a big part of being on a team. Simplicio had missed that last shot. Now Brock down the other end misses the shot, and the rebound to Connor. Chieftains look to go back out in front as Maloney drives. And before the shot, a pushing foul against the Hall Warriors. Fifth team foul here in the second half for Hall. And the foul against Tyson. And this will be O'Connor to inbound underneath his own basket. Hudson guarding the inbound for the Warriors. Almost a five-second call, but they get it into Simplicio. Hands it off to Maloney. Maloney drives. And I didn't see what happened right there, John. He carried, he carried the ball. He uh, wanted to change direction, and he got a held the ball a little too long in his hand before he, before he drove to the basket. Good call. So the turnover gives it back to the Warriors, who have the one-point advantage with 90 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Long range three by Hudson is no good. Big rebound by Wells, but he has it stripped and stolen by Emil. Here's Maloney in the front court. Pull up three. Good. Nine in the quarter. 15 for the game. And the Chieftains back up 34-32. When he finds that shot, he's deadly. He can shoot it. He can shoot it. He's got shooters get into a rhythm. And right now, it looks like he's focused on doing it. And, uh, you know, he couldn't make a string of them if, if the Hall lets him. Wells with the answer at the other end. And a timeout being taken. 34 all with 58 and 7 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level. Keating Insurance Agency, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, Connard and Hall PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson, all state level supporters of the War Chief Sports Council, helping to make broadcasts like the one today possible. First of two this afternoon, we'll have the girls game for you at 4 o'clock. And talking to Colleen Dugging the other day, she says it's been 30 years, Coach, since the girls have hung a banner in this gym, and they can be co- or tri-champions of the CCC Central Blue with a win here this afternoon. Plenty of motivation for them. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy for Coach Doug and, and, their, and their whole staff and those kids. Um, the seniors, especially, they really helped kind of build this program to where it is right now. And uh, back in the days, I think it was Danny, Danny Wilcox um, that maybe won the one prior to this. Uh, wonderful coach in his own right. Um, I, uh, and I'm a little selfish because uh, I bleed red over here, but um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they do, in fact, hand, hang another number on that championship banner. And that could come with a win this afternoon against a Hall team playing all year without their two best players. 
Another good job by Jeff Kaplowitz at the helm, and uh, they'll check into the contest. 7-12, and 12, and if they can pull the uh, major upset this afternoon, they'd qualify yet again for the state tournament. So plenty on the line for them. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, we were, I think we mentioned earlier that uh, it, it's happened uh, on the boys' side and the girls' side many, many times that uh, the hall Connor game was the deciding factor whether he went to the, the state tournament or not. And it just put another layer of emotion on top of an already very emotional rivalry. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's all good fun and makes it that much more exciting for everybody and the kids. It's fun stuff. Very well said and fun indeed, that's for sure. Hudson picked up the foul. That's his third, sixth on the team. And here's Maloney at the free throw line. And the first is no good. Aiden, a 73% free throw shooter. Had 22 against Hall in the first matchup. Has 15 this afternoon. Nine of those have come in the last six minutes of this contest. Trying to break the tie, and he does. Third lead. And a rare rest for him as Maloney comes out. A.J. Fair, the freshman guard, checking in. A little different score on the scoreboard. It's actually 35-34, Chieftains in front. 20 seconds to go here in the third. This is Tyson for the Warriors. Dribbles to his right, hands it off, and we're going to have a pushing foul against the Chieftains. It's only the fourth team foul, so they're not in danger of putting them at the line yet in non-shooting situations. Yeah, uh, I'm sure a lot of the aficionados out there are watching both teams play defense in there sometimes cringing a little bit that we just don't make that extra slide with our feet to shut that uh, path to the basket down or the baseline down. Um, but with this much energy, I'm sure those guys will make that extra step. Three seconds left, the shot is deflected and knocked out of bounds. That was Paleo who got a piece of that one. Hall retains possession, but now just 1.9 seconds to go here in the third. It's almost like a catch and shoot scenario here for the Warriors. Roth to put it in play. Pass to Brock. His shot at the buzzer is no good. And that's the way the third quarter ends. A good third quarter for Connard. They outscore Hall 18 to 9 in the frame. And as we go to the fourth, we got a good one for you. Connard 35, Hall 34 on WHC TV Channel 5, presented by the War Chief Sports Council. We'll have the fourth quarter right after this. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors at the Captain's Level Supporters Group, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, and Coastal Tub and Rob Ludkin, as well as the all-conference supporters, Allied Printing, and the Hartford Golf Club. Thanks to our technical tandem today, G2 Hundley and Jen Evans, Pete Lamoureux, John Benye back with you here at Goddard High School. Eight minutes to go. 35-34, coach, as good as advertised. Yeah, it's all Connor, like we said earlier. You never know. I got to give a lot of credit to the Chieftains uh, that last period, you know, taking the big guys kind of out of the equation. They were really uh, putting a hurting on us earlier, but, um, the, you know, they, they, they did a great job on defense, getting to the basket, finding each other. Really, really a great job by Connor. Paleo long-range three, and it just hits the bottom of the net and goes out of bounds. We talked about before, Kevin Paleo making a difference with his long-range shooting the first time these teams got together at Hall on the 25th of January. Hit the big three at the end of regulation, two more in overtime. That propelled his team to the win. This is Roth. 
Handing off to Tyson. Circus move is no good. And Emil gets the rebound. Maloney in the front court for the Chieftains. Picked up by Tyson. Cuts and passes off. Here's O'Connor. He's double teamed. Ball is loose. Stripped by Roth and controlled by Hall. James with the bounce pass. This is Varengia. He's the nephew of the longtime Connor softball coach, Tom Varengia. Outside, this is James. Bounce pass to Brock. Drives baseline. Up with the shot. It's good. Hard to stop that move when Brock gets the ball on the baseline. Yeah, nice dribble penetrate and then just use his length really well to just make a nice little a jump, not even a jump hook, but just a little floater uh, for a big guy. I, I'm really impressed with uh, his, his touch. He's doing a nice job. Long shot is missed, and the rebound goes to Hall. Brock has 15 points this afternoon, one under his season average. 36-35 Hall. We've had five lead changes in the last three minutes of action. Baseline pass for James, kicks it out. Roth, an open three, it's too long, and Emil gets the rebound. Here's Mark Emil into the front court for Connor. Gives it off to Maloney. Guarded there by Tyson. Maloney with the left-handed move, missed it. Simplicio with the rebound and the bucket. I think they might have teed up for Rencia underneath. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, I didn't see what happened, but I think uh, Mike, uh, Mikey was questioning uh, the call, obviously, and uh, got a technical for it. So with a one-point advantage, as the officials this afternoon, Andy Savo and Dean DeAngelis talking things over with Brian Moretti. And Maloney, the 73% free throw shooter, will get the two from the line. And the first is up and good. Do you like the rule of going from one to two technical foul shots? I do, I do. Uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I do. I just, uh, it just seems to make sense. It keeps, you know, it's got a little bite to it. It makes kids maybe think more about it. So, yeah, I, I like it. So he hits two for two at the line. And Connor retains possession. 39-36, the three-point advantage, the largest lead this afternoon for the Chieftains. This is Emil, back outside to O'Connor. They'll have the ball in Maloney's hands a lot. Pull-up three is no good. Rebound is loose, and here's James speeding the other way for the Warriors. 39-36, Connor with 5-10 to play here in regulation time. Brock thought about the three. Top of the circle, Roth, right side to James. He directs traffic, and now a foul is going to be called against Connor underneath. It's going to be against Emil. Yeah, uh, Mark tried to move. Uh, that was the second push in the post. Um, the guys that play in the post, learn, you know, they can give a little bump with their arm, but then they got to learn, learn to move the move guys out of the post with their body, their hips, and what have you, so it doesn't look so obvious that they're really trying to shove the guy out of there. So he got a little carried away with his arms. Second foul on Emil, fifth on the team. This is Wells, back outside. Brock thought about the three. He leads Hall with 15. Maloney leads all scorers this afternoon with 17. Roth for a three for the tie, it's good! Daniel Roth from downtown, and he has tied the game at 39. We had overtime coach, the first matchup, could be heading that way again. Yeah, Dina's gonna get cold again tonight, I'm afraid. But you know what? I'd rather be here anyway, so yeah. I'm hoping for an overtime, to be honest with you. It would be fun, that's for sure. Maloney tied up by Tyson. Ball goes out of bounds, and they're going to say last touched by Connor. And then a little trash talk exchange between Tyson and Maloney that time, initiated by Tyson. Yeah, that was initiated. You know, guys compete, and, you know, the talking can go a little bit, but uh, in terms of uh, – 
like a shooter, like uh, Aiden's drawing a lot of attention, like I said he would. Um, guys that are as good as him on offense have to, you know, they got to learn to, you know, expect that there's going to be a certain amount of more physicality directed towards them, a little bit more maybe talk or chippiness or whatever. It's just, you know, something that they have to, you know, learn to deal with. But, but Brock too, that, the, uh, Simplicio is being very physical with him right now. There's probably a couple words being uh, murmured back and forth there as well. Oh, sure. Simplicio with the foul. Tyson with the shot, and it's no good. Rebound to Connor. Here are the Chieftains in the front court. This is O'Connor with the basketball. Bell with the shot, no good. Rebound James. James dribbling out near midcourt. Right side, this is Brock. Drives baseline. Very good. I'm sorry, yeah, that was what we were talking about a little earlier. O'Connor taking that extra defensive slide step towards the baseline to shut that guy down. Excellent defense right there. James missed a shot. The ball was halfway down and then came back out again. Here's Maloney. And they're going to call an offensive foul against the Chieftains. Yeah, uh, Bell just didn't get that an extra little step out and, you know, blocked that kid off. He moved a little bit more than he wanted to on that screen. Seventh foul against Connard. Wells checks out of the game for Hall. And it'll be Hall basketball here in the backcourt. And this is James bringing it across. Pass down low. Well, there's Tyson off the nice pass from Varengia. And the Warriors have taken a 41-39 lead. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to seesaw back and forth a little bit. Um, and uh, it's, everything's magnified. I'm just looking around here. Every time someone makes a good play or makes a basket, the place is erupting. It's great stuff. Really is. Terrific atmosphere here this afternoon at Connard. Oh, big foul on the play. As going crashing to the deck that time was one of the Chieftains. Roth picks up the foul. And he's the first in serious foul trouble, Coach. He's got four. Yeah, he's, he, he needs to calm down. He, got, he tried to run through that screen that time. Uh, and, you know, he's a tough kid. I, I, I love his energy. Um, but, you know, at this point in the game, you, we really need to keep our wits about us, you know, and, uh, use our emotion the right way. One and one for Paleo, and he hits the first. And he has tied the game at 41. One more for Paleo, a 68% free throw shooter. Rims out and Ferencia gets the rebound. Scoreboard showing 41-40, two and a half minutes to play. Here's Ferencia, right side to James. Directing traffic, picks up his dribble. Tyson might have gone away with a walk that time, but back outside the James. Left side, and there's the Hawks. Hudson guilty of the turnover that time, Coach. Yeah, Hudson, uh, Miguel can stroke the ball. He just got a little anxious, you know. Uh, time and space uh, as a shooter or a scorer like him, he just needs to understand he's got more than he, he thinks he has. He didn't have to rush it, but there again goes that uh, Hall Connor to motion, you know, just to kind of keep it in check. He didn't have to hurry. Full timeout taken by the Chieftains, 41-40. Hall has the lead. War Chief Sports Council again likes to thank many of its fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, Keating Insurance Agency, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Conard and Hall PTO, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all for your patronage of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like these possible here today. If you're watching the live broadcast and the live feed, we'll have the rebroadcast for you 
coming up next Saturday night at 7 o'clock, February 20th, and then again the following Saturday, the 27th, also at 7 o'clock on WHC-TV. We'll have live hockey for you two weeks from today on the 27th. The Hall Southington Co-op team taking on Connor. Both teams having excellent seasons. Brian Cannon, the head coach at Hall. Greg Raymer, the head coach at Connor. Excellent campaigns for both. So here we go. Connor basketball. They're down one. 2-10 to go here in the contest. Here's Maloney. Goes down the lane. Simplicio back out to Emil. Yeah, at this point in the game, it's going to come down probably um, to who's going to execute their sets the best and get the best opportunities or shots at the basket. Right now, Connors is being pretty, uh, pretty patient, pretty deliberate about their next uh, basket attempt. Emil for three. It's good. Mark Emil from downtown has given Connard a two-point lead. The 34% shooter coach from out there, and he nailed that one. Yeah, you know, like I said, like, like I know everything, right? His, his, his strength is uh, driving to the basket, and he steps back and hits a three. Hey, that's Hall Connor for you, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And he's made his threes. Hey, if you're, if you're in 34%. Yeah, to his credit. To his credit, he has. There will be someone, there always is in a Hall Connor game that you don't expect to do something, and there's for sure to do it. Coach, our eighth lead change since the 2.30 mark of the third quarter. What a seesaw battle, as you described. Yeah, Hall Connard is great. Uh, and, you know, these guys are pretty evenly matched. They're well coached. Brian and uh, Jared do a great job with their kids. You can see right now in that last set that Connard ran. They ran through a number of opportunities to score. They kind of scrolled down the list of options they had to score. And I'm sure that last one for Mark, he was wide open. He swung the ball to him, he's open for a three. You know, I'm sure Coach says if he got it, shoot it. So good for them. I'm sure Hall's going to come out and be very deliberate this next time. Probably looking for the big, one of the big guys instead, a little inside out with James perhaps. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Brock. Leading Hall with 15 points this afternoon. Maloney leading all scorers with 17 for the Chieftains. Has 11 of those since the intermission. Really picked up his game. Hit a couple of long range threes. Hit the two big technicals too, coach. Yeah, I, I think the, those threes got, got his head in, in the right attacking mode and made him feel a little bit more comfortable about what he's doing out there. Um, and then, you know, on the defensive side, the team, too, uh, starting the second half, really did a great job of kind of making it difficult for those post guys to just catch the ball. 43-41, Connor. Hall with the ball. 120 to go as James bobbles and then controls near midcourt. Here's Roth with the basketball. Watch closely by O'Connor. This is Brock for Varengia. Coming up on a minute to go in regulation. Roth from Tyson. Back to James. Again, both teams with a foul are in the bonus. So any foul from here on out sends the other team to the free throw line. And a timeout being taken by Brian Moretti. 47 and a half seconds to go. His team has the basketball down two. Yeah, so I'm thinking Brian may um, try to set up something that either gets the ball thrown directly to the post. I mean, they had a nice out of bounds play earlier there where uh, Brock just rolled across the middle and they threw it to him. Um, I think at the end of the half, uh, he might maybe want to do that as a quick hitter, but probably more of a ball screen, you know, a pick and roll kind of situation uh, to one, one of the bigger guys and then have Brock roll in from the low post is what I'm guessing. Either way, those guys, we've seen all of their post guys do a great job tonight. So um, I think uh, James is going to be a big part of what happens next. Hall hasn't won on this floor since 2012. Connor trying to beat the Warriors for the fourth consecutive time on their home court. Trying to sweep the season series for the first time since you guys did it back in 03, 04. How about that? It's been 12 years. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It'd be nice for us for sure um, as the young guys here at Connor are building uh, their program together. Um, again, it, you know, as far as Hall Connor goes, you know, it's a great little feather in your cap once you, uh, you know, you're at the beach in the summer remembering back with a nice smile on your face that you beat your hometown rival. 
And something they do talk about for the rest of the year, I'm sure. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes a little bit too much. Off the timeout, here's James. Dribbles with the left hand. Left side, Brock. Holds high overhead. Nice entry pass to Roth. He's pushed off. Shot won't count. Foul against Connard. And it should be a one and one opportunity for the Warriors here. Yeah, tough break. Uh, defender kind of stumbled into Roth as he went up. And, you know, he's going to earn him now. And that's all Connard again. Uh, geez, look at it. It's like uh, another opportunity to tie the game up with 35 seconds to go. <laughs> so Roth at the line. Senior captain Danny Roth playing in his final Hall Connard matchup. 35 seconds flat to play in regulation. It's a one and one opportunity off the eighth Connor team foul. And he misses the shot. Brock gets the rebound. No good, but a foul. There's Brock asserting himself off the offensive glass again. Coaches, coaches are going to go crazy when that happens. When they when you allow a rebound, it very easily could have been, you know, looking to uh, shoot, make a three-point play right now instead of a two-pointer. We got to we got to get bodies here. Uh, so anyway, if he makes both, then uh, Connor has plenty of time to come down and you know run another good set like they just did. Hits the first one point game. Wells in, Roth out. That's an offensive defensive substitution, and getting a little more of a body presence for the Warriors rebounding wise. Brock misses the second weak side rebound. And they're gonna call. Are they gonna call an offensive foul? Yeah, I think I think they called. Uh, I think it was Varengia for an over the back rebound, um, which I really didn't see for sure. But I'm. It's got to be that he came down with the ball, kind of fell. All right, now we got 31 seconds, and uh, we need to take care of the ball. They're full court here. Uh, we need to get. It's tough to get the ball in sometimes. Believe it or not, we're playing five on four uh, on the court. So we need. To, and Hall might be willing to uh, foul right away. I'm not sure what they're gonna do. We'll see. 43-42, Connor. 31 seconds to go, and Maloney is fouled. Yeah, so a lot of times, uh, as a coach, you want to give yourself an, an, an opportunity to get the ball back, so you give a quick foul. Um, Maloney's probably not the guy you want to foul if you can help it because he's a good free throw shooter, but, I mean, in terms of time management, uh, Brian did a nice job in setting the foul right away. Whether he makes or misses right now, you know, they're going to have another opportunity to uh, make a basket. So, that's on Aiden. And, and good point. Even if he makes two, it's still a one-possession game. Still got a half minute to go. So, no longer a one-and-one. One. It's a double bonus for Maloney at the line because that was the 10th team foul against the Hall Warriors. <laughs> and both coaches talking with uh, one of the officials. <laughs> so they're checking things out at the scorer's table. 29 and 7, 10 seconds to go. See, Roth was on the bench with the four fouls, and they just put his number up on the board there. So it's interesting to see. So they sort it all out. And when play resumes, it'll be Aiden Maloney getting set to shoot two here at the line. Aiden, 17 points this afternoon, and he rims out the first. Big miss that time. He'll have one more. 73% foul shooter, and he hits that one. 18 points for Maloney. 44-42, countered by two. 
25 seconds to go as James walks it across and Brian Moretti asking for and receiving a 30 second timeout. Yeah, so it could go a couple ways. All could try to want to get to the, you know, the basket quickly and uh, maybe give themselves another chance to defend or what have you. That would kind of favor Connor. It also gives them another crack to come down this way if Hall does in fact go ahead. Um, or Hall could, you know, hold for the last opportunity to make a basket and minimize Connor's opportunity to score down the stretch. it will be interesting to see what Coach Murray decides. But the Connor guys definitely have to, you know, take away all initial passes to the big boys inside if they can without following them. Um, and then hope, and hope that they settle for a long jumper and block out and get a rebound. If you're the coach here, would you want them? As a defensive coach, you want them to, to stay to the outside. Would you concede a three? Well, not to James, I don't think I would. Roth just hit one. It's, again, that's all counted. Again, sometimes you think the, the least guy that's going to make a three is exactly the guy that's going to make one. So i got to play solid defense. Okay, here we go. 20 seconds to go. James directing traffic with the basketball. Cuts to his left. Passes to Roth. And the pass to flex off Tyson and goes out of bounds. Rick Juan Tyson took his eye off the ball that time. I think he wanted to cut towards the basket before he received the pass, Coach. Yeah, they were looking for Brock uh, to come across the lane to catch the ball. The Chieftain sagged in and took that away. And I didn't see who wanted to receive that ball. I don't think he was, he was I think he was expecting the post guy to get it and it came to him a little bit quicker than he was expecting. It was a, um, a good break for the Chieftains. 30 second timeout taken by Coach Jared Leghorn and the Connor Chieftains. So again, it's Connor 44, Hall 42, 10.8 seconds to go, and it will be Connor basketball. Here, PA announcer Bill Watson in the background, imploring all the kids to stay off the court at the conclusion of the game. War Chief Sports Council. I'd like to thank our captain's level supporters, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, and Coastal Tool, along with the all-conference supporters, Allied Printing, and Hartford Golf Club. Simplicio inbounding for the Chieftains. And off the inbound, I believe a foul against Hall. Holding foul against Tyson. And is that going to be Maloney going back to the line? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. He's, uh, um, you know, he, he's in a good spot right now. I, I, just to, to close this game out for the Chieftains, if he can, um, I think he's a little frustrated with himself not being able to catch the ball initially. But, um, you know, he got what he wanted. He's on the foul line. And that's what guys like him want to do. They like the ball in their hands with an opportunity to make a basket. So he's in a good spot. Big-time players want to be big-time players at the key moments, right? Yeah, they have very short memories. So any misses or bad plays are quickly forgotten. They want the ball back again. First of two in the double bonus, and he hits. 45-42. This is the critical foul shot coming up. This would make it a two-possession game. And he misses. Still a one-possession game. Hall can tie with a three. Six seconds to go. In the front court. Long three. Robinson is short off the front of the rim. Connor has it. And they're going to win the game. The Chieftains win it. 45-42. Hold on. There's still six-tenths of a second remaining. But it will be Chieftains basketball. I think a foul is being called on the play. With six-tenths of a second to go. And the chant from the Connard kids that this is over. So here's Palau with two at the line. And he hits the first. And that'll do it. Yeah, that's unless something really, really crazy happens. Um, you know, nice job by both teams, obviously, to finish the game. 
um, really close and, you know, making a basket here or there was a uh, deciding factor. Nice job by the Chieftains, I think, in the second half to take their big guys out of the game a little bit. Um, I, I th it seems to me that was the big difference in the game for the, uh, uh, the Chieftains today. Awesome game, won by the Chieftains, 46-42. They sweep the season series for the first time since 03 and 04, and what a comeback for them. Trailed by as many as 11 in the opening half. We're down eight at halftime, 25-17. They then proceeded to outscore Hall in the second half by a count of 29-17, to and they win the game. Down the final, Connard 46, Hall 42. Stay tuned. Hope to have some post-game interviews before we get set for the girls' game between Connard and Hall, all brought to you on WHC-TV Channel 5 in concert with the Royal Chief Sports Council. Back after this. Thanks, Eddie. We'll put him, we'll put him here.
Aiden, I want to know, what did Coach tell you at halftime? You're down eight at the break. Something turned around because in the second half, you really started to click. Uh, he told us to be resilient when we were down eight and to just keep playing and fight back. How about for yourself personally? Held the six points in the first half. Did you get frustrated a little bit because you really got your game together in the second half? What turned around for you personally? Uh, when, when I couldn't score at first, I was trying to get the other uh, my teammates involved. And then the second half, I came back with a fresh start and just tried to play my game. Coach, this is the first time the Conard boys have swept the season series from all since 2003-2004. How does that sound? Uh, I, every win is a great win. So regardless if it's Hall or anybody else, I'm happy. So uh, that's, that's my saying. Any win's a great win. Great defensive intensity by all the kids in the second half. Again, uh, you allowed them mid-20s in the first half, shut them down, held them under 20 points in the second half. Great job defensively. Yeah, our goal is 12 a quarter, 12 or less a quarter. Um, and and the, then the other thing is it's a lot easier to score on offense when you're getting stops. Uh, you get build that momentum and that positivity, and then you're able to get in transition. So they did a good job, the, the guys that were out there, no matter who it was, of buckling down uh, and working their butts off. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them, and I'm proud of them. And what can you say about this kid? Ice water in his veins down the stretch, especially in the fourth quarter. Took the game over in the first matchup against Hall. He did it again here today. Yeah, he, he, he likes these types of games. Uh, he's, uh, I, I, at halftime, I told him, just keep shooting. Keep shooting, and they're, they're going to fall, uh, and, and they did. So I'm happy for him that he was able to have that experience. Again, the, the wins and losses don't show the growth of this team, but uh, how would your overall assessment be of this season? Uh, what, what I told you uh, when we talked this week was, uh, you, you look at a record and you might think things are frustrating and, and guys could be down, um, but they're not. They come early, they stay late. Uh, we have a whole bunch of hard workers and positive kids, um, and we're building in the right direction. So, uh, again, I'm happy for the kids that are involved. It, it, it could be tough w when you have a losing record like that, but they grind every day uh, and they treat each other with respect, so I, have no, I couldn't say more about them. Jared, thank you. Aiden, thank you. Congratulations, guys. Go enjoy the win. Connor Chieftains, winners here this afternoon. They defeat the Hall Warriors. And now we get set for the girls' contest. Connor against Hall coming up next on WHC-TV. We'll be back right after this.